Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. Decided to wear this little number on me barnet today. Just why not, you know, it's a, it's a summer's day here in Indonesia, in Bali, which is currently where I'm based. We're gonna be talking a topic today that I think is gonna get you guys excited again. I'm in that kind of mood with videos at the moment where I want to be making videos that I think is going to boost the mood of everybody because it's been a bit of a it's been a bit of a wacky start to the year on the whole in terms of like the general feeling around the globe. So if we can get excited about football return and if we can get excited about a GBFC video, then my work here is done. But if you're not yet subscribed, we've got a little bit of an issue because then you don't know when the injection of goodness is coming to your sub box, do you? So hit the subscribe button. Hit Hit the like button and this is actually the second time I've tried recording this introduction to this video today because for some daft reason my microphone's making weird noises and in the previous recording it sounded like this. This is going to annoy some of you. We are going to be it's bloody annoying. Throughout the entire start of the video we're going to be talking today about why Chelsea's transfer ban is actually a blessing in disguise. It's something that we've seen different things happen within the ban such as it being overturned not knowing if it was going to be overturned and then January comes about and Chelsea still don't buy anyone. There have been a lot of questions asked. We're going to jump now into the video at the point where the microphone did start working and if it gets confusing just know that we're going to make a little celebration as to why this transfer ban is grand in today's video. Let's get into it. Teams are always looking to sign new players to add new injections of quality in different areas. The world of football now is controlled and dominated by large sums of money and when Chelsea aren't in the same boat as almost every other team with that ability to dip into their pockets to sign players, what we've seen from Frank Lampard is him use a team that wasn't necessarily built in his way, Premier League in fourth place. All of this was done with what you could technically call a squad that we still knew needed investments further. Obviously we signed Christian Pulisic but that was the only one. That business was done before. So regards to the signing of Timo Werner and what is looking progressively likely is if Chelsea are interested in 75 million pound man Kai Havertz, first things first, I'm getting messages blooming left, right, behind and in front and in the centre talking about Timo Werner every single day. I could sit here every day and say it's getting closer or it's, it's done. But what we can understand now, and this can hopefully put this whole topic to bed for a little while until he's actually confirmed that he's holding up the shirt, in which case I will be doing a flipping banging video on that one. The reason why Timo Werner has not really been announced right now is because of, you guessed it, you flipping got it, didn't you? The coronavirus, you know, that little it's just been running around everybody off. The coronavirus means that Timo Werner cannot come to London to undergo a medical because if he was to do that he would have to isolate himself for 14 days meaning that he wouldn't be able to play games for Red Bull Leipzig and finish the season strongly. So for those of you panicking don't worry about it. It seems from everything that I can understand and know that this transfer will be confirmed once the German season is over, most likely. But as for Chelsea going for Kai Havertz, if the transfer ban wouldn't have happened, yes, it's hypothetical in the sense that we may have spent money last summer, immediately replaced Eden Hazard, and then we may have spent in January as well, and we could be sitting in another world, in like an alternative space right now, we could be sitting top of the table, in which case the video clock content would be ever so slightly different, but we are not. And what this has enabled Chelsea to do is actually bring forward a project that hasn't necessarily just been spending a lot of money on big stars that can walk straight into the first team. What this has enabled us to do is the work that goes on that we don't necessarily see. We hear a lot about the youth team success at Chelsea, but we don't necessarily hear about it in the mainstream as much as we do Chelsea going and splashing 50 million on Fernando Torres. You know what I mean? With these academy players, we're actually seeing the fruits of the labor and the investment that Roman Abramovich has made in building Chelsea as a great academy club where young players have got the best possible opportunities with only facilities, education and everything Chelsea offer to the youngsters. We're now seeing that it's not just a stepping stone to then move on to other clubs or move to rivals. Chelsea's academy is the place where players can actually grow up at the football club and end up playing for the club that they've been with for their entire lives. So what this does as a PR 
alarm move for Chelsea, even though this isn't probably the main reason why it's being done, it makes Chelsea seem like more of a family entity club, where people in the world that aren't necessarily football fans are looking for a reason to become a fan of a football club. They look at all of these players that have such a tight affiliation with the Chelsea fan base, of understanding what it means to be Chelsea Football Club. Potential fans look at this and think, oh, that whole Chelsea story, that is a narrative that I would like to latch onto and be dragged along with. So in terms of Chelsea gaining new fans worldwide, there are definitely ways to gain fans pretty quickly. If we were to sign Lionel Messi, half of the flipping world would end up buying Chelsea shirts. From like a smaller PR perspective, it's a very beautiful story that Chelsea have now created with Mason Mount, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Fikayo Tomori, Tammy Abraham, Reese James, and the list will continue to go on for many years, I believe. The Chelsea Academy is finally being seen as one of the greatest academies in world football. It was a bit of a joke in the past where Chelsea's lone army and making huge money signings would basically make players that are coming through or trying to come through from the Chelsea Academy, it would kind of make it look as if like, well, what's the point? You might as well move now and go and develop somewhere else and actually build an affiliation with another club because you're not going to get in at Chelsea. That's no longer the way. And the way that Frank Lampard has dealt with it, he's thrown these players in at the deep end, which we all heard stories of their ability. Frank Frank has thrown him in at the deep end with no armbands and said, swim boy, swim, young man. And they've done it all. And the main thing, and the reason why Chelsea are now able to go for players such as Timo Werner, Kai Havertz, we've got Philippe Coutinho links coming out now. Supposedly Barcelona want to buy defenders off Chelsea and send Coutinho the other way. More on that another day when that one develops. The reason why Chelsea can go and confirm the signings of Timo Werner so early is because what we have seen in the past 12 months with the sale of Hazard, Chelsea have been able to look at the depth of this squad. We've been able to see where players are going to be able to infiltrate for many years. It's given them an opportunity to lay foundations and to create roots into the core of Chelsea Football Club, which now, it's not like one storm is just going to come and undo all of the hard work, because we're actually seeing the development of that hard work being transcended into something brand new. And when it comes to Chelsea building a team for the future, we're now looking at a team that isn't that far away, potentially from challenging. Yes, the point gap between Liverpool City and us is a little bit crazy, or well, more so just Liverpool and us. City haven't really been with it this season compared to last. But what this shows, it's given the Chelsea board a very long time to look and consider what positions most importantly need strengthening. As for the outcry that happened in January, and I remember myself, I don't exactly remember what video it was, but I said something along the lines of, well, that was a waste of everyone's flipping time. That was a waste of effort going to the, to the courts, to the tribunal to try and get the transfer ban overturned. What was the flipping point in that? Well, what I believe is, we are seeing that decision from the Chelsea board to not invest in a panic in January where we're already doing all right. We're, we're looking at it and we're actually moving in a good direction. We don't necessarily need to dip into the pocket now. This was obviously pre-coronavirus. We're talking mid-season inflated prices. We're talking clubs not wanting to sell unless they can replace players. Chelsea decided not to play their hand and in doing so, we are already seeing with the moves of Werner, the links to Sancho, Havertz, all of these high quality, world class players that Chelsea are being linked with, we're seeing the vindication of that January decision now because Chelsea are able to go in aggressively with intent because we've had more time to assess the squad situation and assess exactly where Frank Lampard wants to invest to build this team that he's looking to create for a strong Chelsea future. Regarding the academy as well, we look at the young players that have come through. We've already mentioned the names and there's plenty more that are going to be making their way as well. We're seeing the young players now signing contracts at times where we're not just considering that they might end up in a Chelsea shirt once or twice in the future. Players like Billy Gilmore, who have been given opportunities this season, signing new deals. Tino Andrin is the next one who I personally believe is going to move into the Chelsea first team squad next season. And I think we're going to see him in similar ways to what we did this year with Billy Gilmore. I believe that whether or not Chelsea go out and spend 75, 80 mil on a Havertz or a Sancho, whether that happens or not, I think Tino Andrin is the kind of mould of a player that Ruben Loftus-Cheek is the prime person to compare him to. Ruben Loftus-Cheek came through the Chelsea Academy, was given little opportunities, he wasn't able to make the breakthrough as early as he might have been if he was to be sold or to keep being loaned to other clubs, 
But he waited for his opportunity. And I think that Andrin would have looked at someone like Ruben, seen that Chelsea is still interested in signing players that play in similar positions to him. But he looks at what Frank Lampard is doing at our club. He looks at what Lampard's philosophy is in terms of a young, flair-driven, attacking side. Tino Andrin ticks every single one of those boxes and that is the reason why he signed the new deal. Chelsea Academy players now have belief and they have faith that their opportunity will be given at Chelsea Football Club. So, if it wasn't for the transfer ban, I don't think we'll have seen this happen in the, more, the most dramatic way that we have. It's all hypothetical. Chelsea could have spent hundreds of millions last summer if there was no ban, potentially, in a whole other world. And we might be sitting here winning the league. But what I believe, and we've mentioned this core and creating the roots of Chelsea Football Club again, this year has more than done that. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. It's been a bit of a passionate one about, you know, kind of just eating that slice of, I'm just picking up a flipping SD card reader. That slice of humble pie that I talk about when I get things wrong. I definitely got it wrong when I said that the transfer ban was the worst thing that could have happened to Chelsea with not spending money in January. What a waste of time. It wasn't, however, is still not quite the end of the Premier League season. There is a chance that we may not finish in the top four, and I might be sitting here with, uh, you know, a little bit of salt to lick, but the Werner deal is pretty much as good as done, which next season is going to make Chelsea a stronger team already. And we're still working behind the scenes on closing other deals, even though the Champions League is a massive thing, of course, I don't think it's going to affect Chelsea in as big of a way as it might affect other clubs. But anyway, thank you guys for watching today's video. If you're not yet subscribed to the George Benson Football Channel, I'd love to ask you to do so. I wear crazy little hats like this one, and sometimes I wear crazy sunglasses in videos. We talk about Chelsea Football Club. There's gonna be a lot more rounded football topics that I'm gonna be adding to the channel soon as well, with the Premier League's return in less than a week. I will see you all later. Bye-bye.